Hey everybody and welcome back to Atomic OSR. This channel is all about old school renaissance pen and paper role playing games. Coming up with cool ideas for adventures, encounters, that sort of thing. And combining it with cool miniature projects and tabletop terrain pieces and such. Today I'm going to be taking something from one of my favorite video games, Darkest Dungeon. Uh, and making a cool model out of it. Decided to go with the Hag, one of the, a very cool boss from a very cool video game that I think uh, translates pretty well to the pen and paper space with her moves and the lair actions, the interesting stuff she can do when, uh, when the party fights her. So let's get started. I picked up this box of Warhammer Beastgrave, uh, the Worm Spat. I'm not really sure what that is, and I'm not really sure what this Warhammer game is. I know these are um, some Nurgle characters, and yeah, I don't know what Beastgrave is. I don't know how to play it. I don't know anything about it, but when I have a little extra money, I like to pick up these models because they're pretty cool. Uh, and that hag on the back looks pretty close to exactly what we want for making a hag from Darkest Dungeon. So we just get these sprues out, get the pieces for the hag. I don't know her uh, canonical name, Warhammer, but um, let's put her together and get started. Now, uh, once they were built, I decided to keep the base and the hag model separate for now. I'm going to talk a little bit more about why I did that later, because I have a certain way that I like to do bases, but first we want to look at this hag and see the minor conversions we want to make to just make it look a little bit less like a warrior of Nurgle and more like the, you know, fungoid infected monster from Darkest Dungeon. So we're starting with some green stuff, which I'm going to use for two major conversions. The only two kind of major things I'm going to do. I started by rolling out a piece of the green stuff and then using a couple pieces of crafting foam that just use the flat edges to kind of square off this green stuff sausage. I'm going to use it for a couple of things, but for now I'm going to let it just sit in a little bit of water so it doesn't stick, but mostly I'm just letting it dry off. I'm going to rummage in my bit box and I'm going to grab a few hands and arms left over from a couple of Frostgrave kits that I had, and a bone, because I just found that, thought it was interesting, thought it would add to her, uh, you know, swamp hag scariness, by putting some dangly bits of, you know, grisly remains, severed arms, and bones. These are the, you know, the trophies of her victims, the trophies that she keeps of her victims, but also the, you know, the soup components for the nasty brew that she makes. Um, and, you know, just some minor things to add to make her a little bit more spooky, evil. She's already pretty evil, being, you know, a Chaos Nurgle model, but um, making it a little more specifically evil for the type of boss we want it to be for this encounter. Which is someone who, you know, when she defeats her victims, she chops them up and she makes a nasty soup out of them. So, you know, pretty grim and grisly stuff. So we want her wardrobe, we want her model to reflect that grim and grisliness with a bunch of severed bits hanging off of her. When you put this model down on the table, you want your players to look at it, you want them to see all this fun stuff, and you want them to think like, oh, you know, if we fail, that's going to be us. That's going to be our arms and legs hanging off of her pouches. That's going to be our severed head. That's going to be, you know, that's how we're going to end up if we, you know, if we can't pull out a victory. Now, after that bit of green stuff had had time to set and dry for a little bit, I clipped it in about a third. I clipped off about a third of it. I left the other half sitting there and I used the rest of it to kind of uh, roll out and press into the gaps and the kind of, you know, nasty 
wounds and holes and separating, you know, f- exposed flesh parts that this Nurgle character has all over it. That's kind of the, you know, defining feature of Nurgle models is these, you know, like open separating, uh, you know, wounds in their flesh with all kinds of nasty stuff inside them. And I really like that. But in Darkest Dungeon, this hag model is kind of living in symbiosis with the eldritch fungus taint um that you know lives in that part of the forest so you know i wanted to fill that space with something that looked like out of control corrupted growth rather than you know outright decaying flesh and muscle and you know i just rolled it on using my little dental tool and then i kept wetting the point and using it to poke little holes and you know, give it a kind of fungoid texture. Next, I worked with my X-Acto knife to put some scores in that block. Now, you'll see I added it to the hag's staff, because in Darkest Dungeon, the um, the hag's, like, main melee attack is a meat cleaver. It's called, you know, tenderize the meat or tenderize the flesh or something like that and i thought that was really cool really cool weapon you know a big kitchen implement used as a weapon because when she beats people she chops them up and she cooks them so you know using a kitchen tool as a melee weapon pretty good i also added an antlered skull and i forgot to film that part there was a mistake but now it's time to prime and paint now i just use uh, Vallejo rattle cans. Um, I am going to set these guys up on a little board and take them outside and I just do a black, flat black primer layer all over everything and then I do a simple Zenithal highlight from above with the Vallejo off-white spray. And that's usually all I do for priming because I, you know, it works with my painting style and I like the, I like the built-in shadows and highlights you get from priming this way. And it works, you know, with my paint style, which is not great by, you know, taking care of some of that detail work for me. It helps the detail stand out and then I can use just, you know, some layers of color to achieve good shading and blending. I also primed the top to this pill bottle, and I'm sure you can guess what I'm going to do with that. But now we got everything primed, ready to go. This is the bit I was talking about earlier when I said I have a way that I like to do basing. I prefer just simple black bases. I don't like putting detail on them, and I don't like adding you know color to them, because I feel like that locks them into an environment, and I really like my miniatures to feel like I can use them multiple times in multiple situations, and I find the black base is just the least distracting, most universal, easy-to-use way. But now, it's time to get painting. Here we see the, you know, final game art for the hag, and I'm going to follow this color scheme pretty closely, starting with a dirty green for basically everything. I'm going to do a couple thin layers of this so that the Zenithal Prime shines through, so that, you know, lower down and in the shadows underneath it's darker, and up top we get a lighter color, and this is all with the same mixture of green, brown, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of tan to achieve that sort of just like dirty, boogery green cloth. Like someone who's been living in a dirty fungusy swamp. Next, I added some blue and a little bit more brown into that same color to get the secondary highlight color on the hag's robes. This, you know, it looks a lot like the green, but, you know, it's different enough to just give the model some variety. Next, I got some sickly green added some yellow, and painted all the fungusy growths on her back and pouring out of her clothes and this, you know, gross tentacle that's left over from the, you know, the Nurgle model. I decided to just, like, leave that there and not mess with it because I thought it looked good. It's not strictly, uh, you know, canonical to the Darkest Dungeon hag, but I think it helps this, you know, model work really well as a hag. So added yellow to that, then came in with some 
brown red for the hair and you know just kind of carefully applied that now that i'm working on upper layers and i don't want to smear it on anything that i got going underneath keep the model looking sharp and you know the details looking like they contrast well with each other that's one of the great things about these games workshop models is you know they really are incredibly detailed with tons of definition and distinction between the different parts of the models but if you're going to pay for these models because they are you know one of the most expensive miniature lines out there you you know you want to make sure that you're painting them with some precision so that you actually get to visually enjoy the quality now here I used a simple flesh tone. I used it on the severed head, all the hag skin, and I also applied it to the you know hanging bits of flesh, the hands and arms that she's got, and her little toes poking out of her robes there, contrasting nicely on the black base. Um, I used the same flesh tone for everything because there wasn't much flesh there, so you know it didn't seem like I was losing that much using the same one. Uh, and then I just used a simple brown for the rest of the pouches and, you know, straps, little leather bits hanging down. Made sure it was a little bit darker, a little more distinct from the uh, hair, which, you know, had that reddish tint to it. I also applied that same brown to the handle of her meat hammer, her meat tenderizer. Um, and, you know, remember, I'm I go for tabletop ready miniatures. I'm not going for like award-winning paint jobs here. I want everything to be painted. I want everything to be, you know, finished and distinct, but I'm also, you know, I'm not trying to kill myself here with the detail. I want these to be serviceable, usable on the tabletop, but also, I, don't know, I paint a lot and I like to get stuff done quickly. Uh, I did the black there for all of the metal. I came back and did it after I did it on the hammerhead. I did it to this little knife here, and I'm going to use the same metal technique that I used for the Reaver Mage, where I'm just going to take that black and brush it with some metallic afterwards. And I also got that little skull painted up on the base. That's the only little bit of detail on the base that I bothered to paint. The rest of it I left black, but I felt like since that skull didn't really count as terrain, it was fine. Next, I moved on to my last step, which is a wash that I got from Black Magic Craft. It's a very cool little, like, grimdark uh, final effect. If you don't want to pay for any of the, you know, official Games Workshop Citadel paint washes, you could just mix this out of a few drops of dark colors, a drop of dish soap, and a bunch of water. And you want it to be very wet, just, you know, a little bit of color to it and it's gonna just run all over the model and sink into the recesses leaving you with a pretty cool grimy monster now let's talk about the encounter if you were gonna run this in your game the main thing that distinguishes the hag in darkest dungeon is she has her cauldron her boiling bubbling pot of you know disgusting people soup so I would keep this little cap Use whatever stats for whatever hag character you like. I'd give her a strong melee attack. And then I would just have her, whenever there's an enemy within melee range of her and the pot, she tosses someone into it. And then the companions would have to, you know, rescue them. And that would be the major change to the encounter. Hey, you tossed my friend in there. I'm going to eat them. You'll never get them out. Something like that that force your player characters to, you know, change their strategy mid-battle. But anyway, that was the hag from Darkest Dungeon. Here's the artwork I was working off, and here's the final product. I think it looks pretty good. Let me know in the comments below how you would run a hag, and what other stuff you'd like to see me steal from video games and convert to the tabletop. For now, I think that's going to do it. Check out my podcast, Two-Headed Game Master. Link in the description below. Like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time for another episode of Atomic OSR. Ah!